Hey guys, this is Karan. I live in Saudi Arabia, studying in ninth grade in Yamu International School. Today, I saw my YouTube account, and a lot of people have been asking me, uh, Karan, can you give us more examples on potential energy and kinetic energy? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you extra practice on potential and kinetic energy. Okay. When, in this tutorial, we'll be talking about more on kinetic and uh, gravitational potential energy, of course, and we are going to have lots of examples, like they said. Uh, if, even if you have any questions, please go ahead and subscribe, like my video, message me, and I'll do it for you. Okay, so the first question on this course, say, is a 78 kg man named Neil climbs a set of stairs 4.2 meter tall in 5.7 seconds. How much work does he do to climb the stair? I'm just gonna move so you can you guys can see the cushion. Okay. Now how do you solve it? Well we know that the Neo weighs seventy eight kg. Okay? And he climbs a set of stairs, which is uh, 4.2 meter tall, okay? And he, he says that he climbed it in 5.7 seconds. Well, it turns out, okay, we have this much of information. Well, it turns out that um, we don't need seconds or time over here because we are finding uh, how much work does he do, right? And like we talked before, work is equal to u g which is gravitational potential energy and gravitational potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height okay so we can say work is equal to mass times gravity times height so mass is 78 kg gravity we know is 9.8 the height is 4.2 meter the work is equal to 3213.756 joules. And this is how we arrive at the answer of work. Okay? So, I'm going to do the next question over here. Okay? And this really isn't a question, it's a diagram question. So, it's not going to be up on the screen. I'm going to draw it up here. Okay? So, the diagram is like this. There is a box. Okay. And it moves 10 kilometers. Okay. And the force we put is from over here. Okay. It's, and it's 90 newtons. Okay. And the degree it says that is 45 degree. Now, how much is the work done? So, we know that work is equal to force times distance, okay? So, but here the force isn't acting on the, ob the object's motion. It's acting vertically, so part of the force is up being applied. So what we do is use work is equal to force times cosine of theta times distance, okay? So work is equal to force, which is 90 newtons, times cosine, and cosine is in calculator, just, just to make you guys sure, cosine of 45, okay, times the distance, well it says 10 kilometers, okay, when you find the work, okay, when you find the work, you should be getting 636.4 joules okay now go into gravitational potential energy okay so the question goes like this if an apple is being holded in a position uh, which is 10 which is that is 10 meter above the ground level how much potential energy would it have if it, was, if it was 10 kg in mass? So all that is it trying to say is the apple, for instance, 
this make uh, make this an apple so it's being hold up uh, 10 meter above the ground okay so this is 10 meter above the ground and this weighs 10 kg okay now how are we going to calculate that okay so. now it's really easy when you get hang of it okay so we know that um, gravitational potential energy is represented as UG and UG is equal to mass times gravity times height okay and we know the mass is 10 kg okay and gravity is 9.8 okay and we do know that it's the height is 10 meters above the ground level so we write 10 meters here if you solve this, okay, you should be getting 9.8 times 1000, okay, and which turned out that it's 980. And this is in joules. Okay. So, let's go to our next question. The next question says that if a boy was lying down on a concrete surface, so a boy is lying down on a concrete surface, which is 1,000 meter above sea level. Whoa. This is like 1,000 meter above the ground, okay? Sea level is above the ground. What is the potential energy if his mass was 72 kg? Well, we do know the formula. It's the same because it's asking how much is the gravitational potential energy. Okay, so what we do, okay, what we do is here's the given information. It says it's thousand meter above the ground, above the sea level. Thousand meter, okay. Okay, the first information is given. What is the gravitational potential energy if his mass was 72 kg? So the mass is 72 kg. And the gravity we know is 9.8. Okay? And don't, if you were asked uh, what's the gravitational potential of an, of an object which is located in the Mars, Jupiter, it's not 9.8. If it were asked what is the gravi potential and gravitational potential energy of this object, which is on the Earth, okay? If it's if the object is on the Earth, it's 9.8, okay? So if you multiply this, you should be getting 705. So that is the gravitational potential energy of that boy who was lying on the concrete surface. Now the last example we are going to talk about here is rather a peculiar example which involves kinetic energy and uh, gravitational potential energy. Okay. So what I mean by that is this is very helpful. Okay. Keep this in mind. Now if you want extra example on this okay what you do is you just change the unit and solve it again and again until you get hang of it okay now the question is pretty long okay so it will, it will be appearing on your screen as well okay so I'm just gonna slide out from your way and it says now you can read it uh, a girl rides a sled from the top of the hill which is 7.4 meter high to the bottom the girl and the sled have combined mass of 28.1 kg and they start from the rest on the hill the sled on the snow is essentially frictionless what is the speed of the girl and sled at the bottom of the hill okay well in this situation it's asking us for the speed okay now all they have given is mass height okay and that is all they have given now grab it it's not asking for gravitational potential energy, okay? It's asking for velocity. And we have things which we need in gravitational potential energy. So what we do is we set up a problem like this. Well, if we know to know uh, velocity, 
okay and we do know the mass and height what we do is arrange the equations like this mass times gravity times height is equal to half times mass times v squared which is velocity squared okay now this is the reason why I put the equation like this to find the velocity. Well, we know the mass is the combined mass is 28.1 kg. We do know the gravity, which is 9.8. Height they have given is 7.4, and mass is given, and half is always there. So what what's remain the velocity? Okay, so after we do that, we find the velocity square. We uh, Square, under uh, square root of that number what we get for velocity square and we get the velocity okay you get the concept so let's plug in the numbers 28.1 kg is for mass times gravity is 9.8 and the height is 7.4 we know the mass is 28.1 and we don't know velocity square Okay, if you were to solve this, you would be getting 2038 is, is equal to 14.05 times velocity squared. Now, you divide 14.05 on both sides, you should be getting 145.1 is equal to v squared. Now what we do to find the velocity is just square root of 145.1. Okay. Now if you were to square root it, you approximately you would be getting 12.04 to be your velocity. Okay. So that's the velocity of the uh, speed of the girl. Okay. So that was the velocity of the girl. Now. I hope this uh, tutorial for extra practice was helpful, okay, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe, please like my videos, it helps me a lot, and uh, please message me your name for my next examples, okay, thank you.